I'm Lina Tripata, a principal scientist uh, working at International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Nairobi, Kenya. First, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to present our work. Um, and the topic of my presentation is application of genetics for improving banana with resistance. So why bananas? Because banana is one of the major staple crop grown in uh, more than 140 countries in the subtropics and tropics. Um, that globally is a fruit crop, but in Africa, staple food. And it's ranked fourth most important crop in Africa. Worldwide, the total production is about 140 billion tons. And a third of that, that is produced in Africa, particularly by smallholder farmers. East Africa is the largest banana producing and consuming region in Africa. Uh, but even though it's an important crop, it has a real constraint like diseases and pests are one of them. And I will say they are the constraints. So there are several diseases like fungal diseases, black cigatoka, fusarium wilt. Uh, there is also bacterial and viral diseases like a bunch of top virus and the banana streak virus. And there are pests like nimit. Um, and views. Um, so basically, we can apply biotechnology for the improvement of banana because the conventional breeding of has several challenges. And so, for the sustainable intensification of crop productivity, we have to come with a, com a conventional technology with biotechnological application. So, you know, now the genome editing is becoming a very robust tool because it has a lot of uh, promises, but it's not a new technology because nature has been editing home for a very long time, creating variation um, and then selecting among the natural variants. So in 2003, that's the mutations were accelerated to chemicals and radiations. And later on, the technology were developed of gene-targeted mutations using zinc finger nucleases or talons, and later on, the CRISPR-Cas9 technology has become uh, a very successful in several crops. Uh, so we have a genome editing in a for banana. Banana has different genotype. It has A genome and the B genome, and there are so different banana. So we have established the technology with different genotypes uh, using the PDS, which is a five gene gene. Um, uh, and if we create the mutation and make this protein functional, then the develop uh, albino phenotype. So it is very easy to phenotyping uh, uh, the additive plant. That's why we use as a, a marker gene, the PDS, and then we have actually tested them by, by PCR with band shift. So you can see here, we can see clearly uh, in, in lane number 24, we can see that, yes, there is a big deletion gene, why there are two lanes there. But further, we have actually checked um, the events using the sequencing uh, for, in and we saw all sort of uh, three, all three types of mutations, like deletion, addition, and, and the solutions. So after establishing uh, the genome editing system, currently we are applying system for developing disease and, and also some of the gene discovery uh, part. But this technology can be used for other traits as well, like the nutritional enhancement and the abiotic stress uh, uh, tolerance. Um, so why are we focusing on disease resistance uh, in my I mentioned that there are so many diseases and and pests affecting a, a banana. Um, so critical need to develop improved varieties of banana with this spectrum and durable resistance to various diseases and pests. And the new breeding technology like CRISPR-Cas9 based genome editing, uh, by that I overexpressing of genes associated with defense or um, editing the genes responsible for the susceptibility or predictive factor of the defense pathway. 
So I will give example for the work we have doing with the virus, the banana streak virus. Banana streak virus is plant pathogenic virus of the genus virus. Basically, it is a standard DNA reverse transcript uh, transcript virus. And the B is a con different viruses belonging to the pararetroviruses. And is classified as endogenic retrovirus because it's integrated into the host genome. And once they are integrated into the host genome, they get antigenous for the ESV. So the genomic sequences of each BSV are integrated in the genomic DNA of of uh, and so in the banana virus, uh, so banana streak virus has three open reading frames. The open reading one and it's a small protein of unknown region is uh, associated with virions. The open frame two encodes a protein of about 14 kilo Dalton, which is involved in virion assembly. But open three is the most important because it encodes a polyprotein with post transcription. Um, and uh, it, it actually uh, encodes like movement protein, the protein that take protease, um, RNAs, edge, and the reverse transcriptase. And basically, it is a Type genome of approximately 7.2 to 7.8 uh, kb. Um, but once it is integrated into the banana genome, there are multiple copies of the, the viral genome uh, integrated as indirect tandem repeat at a single in the B genome of the of banana. So banana has A genome and the B genome. This virus only integrates in the B genome. So basically, which is like about 7 kb virus, it becomes about 22 to 20 kb once it's integrated um, into the banana genome. So when the virus is integrated, uh, the plants doesn't show any symptoms, but under the stress condition, um, which can be the tissue culture and the organization, conventional breeding can be the stresses, but so the environmental stresses like like increase in temperature or deficiency in water like drought, um, the plant all uh, consider them as stress. so under stress condition, integrated uh, a virus pops up as isomal and which is a function uh, of this and and then the plant actually develop uh, the symptoms. It, they show the, the symptoms. Um, so naturally, the banana streak virus is transmitted through millibug uh, or the use of the infected planting uh, material. So you can see from the millibug this slide. Uh, but epidemics occur due to the activation of the endogenous uh, banana streak virus under, under its condition. It has become one of the major challenge in banana breeding, as well as the dissemination of the, the hives. And um, the banana, as the bee genome, is called plantain. So A, A, B are plantain. Breeders cannot use the germplasm, which has um, either one or more than one bee genome. So there is ploid, which is the balbiciana, which is BB. And normally breeders don't use it in the program, so it has important traits it, like for the distance. Because of the endogenous uh, banana streaks integrate in the genome. So that's why it is necessary to make the B genome of banana free of the activable sequence of the ESV. So the strategy for inactivation of the EBSV is we we targeted the open reading frame of the virus. So open reading frame one and two because they are small. So when targeted and and editing happens at the simultaneously at the same time, then we expect a large nation. 
And in the open reading frame three, we have we have targeted only singles, and then that creates a small insertion or deletion. So that is like a small inter. And if we have combined these two, we were expecting that RS should be inactivated uh, uh, permanently. We have designed the guide RNA based on these three open reading frame, and we use the Cas9, which was a codon, uh, plant codon of this uh, uh, Cas9. Uh, and uh, then we have in the same because we have based delivery of the CRISPR um, Cas9 uh, reagent. And, and all our guidelines. Uh, uh, were actually uh, regulated by the rice uh, use uh, promoter. Um, so we use the plantain. So the plantain we used for this study is cultivar gonja bio. Uh, and we collected the mineral from the field in Uganda. These plants were not showing any symptom in the, the field condition. And we have we, uh, started in vitro culture. Uh, in the lab, like like the, the in vitro plants, like you see this in this, uh, and then we wanted to make sure this banana has the endogenous banana freak virus, um, but no episomal form of the virus. So we have done uh, molecular characterization using the PCR application from with uh, various uh, uh, primers based on the based the integrated pattern. We have also done the southern um, analysis, and we have form that uh, it was integrated, and we didn't find any exomal form, and it was integrated as a multiple copy, either as a direct or indirect uh, repeats. So after that, we have generated the cell suspension of that plant in our uh, and used the plasmid uh, with the kind and the guidance uh, in them and, and use the agrobacterium mediated transformation uh, using this cell suspension and generated uh, the transgenic uh, plants. Then after that, we have confirmed the integration of the Cas9 because these were the unique plants, so the Cas9 gene was integrated in the plant. And here you can see the PCR of the uh, showing the Cas9, presence of the Cas9 gene. And also it shows the regeneration of added plants as well as the potted, uh, potted plants. And we didn't see phenotypically a difference between the wild type controls, non edited ones, and with the additive plants. Then we have first analyzed plants using PCR. We have target was the, so uh, we have designed the primers actually for the target site, flanking the open reading frame one and two, because those ones like about 198 base pairs apart. If the time cleave, uh, Simultaneously, then we were expecting uh, a deletion of 100 megabits, and we saw that band shift analysis. And several of the samples didn't show any band shift. That means that either there were no mutations or the indels were all, which will not be able to uh, serve on the on the gel. So we also did the T7 endonuclease for once, and then we have seen um, that the different fragments, which means there were small indels in, in that. After that, we did the sequencing. So we did the sequencing for the the, uh, the, uh, the two targets, S1 and the S2. So we amplified the 180 base pair uh, fragment covering the two targets. And, and then we sequenced 10 replicates of the clone for each event. And 17 out of the event sequence showed target uh, a mutation, and out of 17, actually 15 showed the mutations at both sites. Um, and uh, then we, when the mutations were actually together, we saw 
uh, in many of them, we saw not 198 deletion. So it was a big deletion. And only two out of 20 even shows the homo homogeneous mutation, knocking all the copies of the genes because there are multiple copies and was our aim. After that, we sequence for the target, the S3. Um, again, we amplified the target and cloned and then sequenced. And 14 out of 20 events in the S3 um, also showed the, the mutation. Um, and in this case, the, the mutations were uh, small indels, the addition or, or deletion or the replacement. And, and then 14 even actually is leading the reading frame shift with the, with the potential to inactivate the EBSV. Um, so after the sequencing, we have confirmed, uh, yes, these were the edited, and then uh, took eight edited events for the glasshouse evaluation, along with the with the control, uh, which were additives. So in the figure, the first figure is the control, and the remaining are the additive events. And stress the line um, through the waters. So we didn't give the water to these plants for two weeks, and after two weeks, these plants, the cold plant actually, a streak symptom. Uh, um, and only two events uh, of the additive show also slide six. The other six out of eight even tested didn't show any symptom of banana streak of disease. Um, so then we further tested it by PCR for the presence of the virus, uh, symptomatic and the non-symptomatic and we didn't find any amplification in the non-symptomatic plan. We also did the qPCR check and in this our control was the Cavendish because Cavendish has triple A. So in that case, there is no integrated streak virus. We have seen control and our F6 additive events were similar to the control confirming that those uh, six events had uh, activation of the virus. Um, so asymptomatic plants handles in all the open reading. And I was curious why the two uh, even showed the symptoms. So the two even the two simple events had indels only the open reading frame one, open reading frame two, but they didn't have any symptom in the open reading three, uh, which indicates that the open reading frame three may play a crucial role in symptom development. Uh, so basically, as I explained before, open reading frame three encodes a polyprotein, and which is postscriptional by aquatic protease into the functional ORF3 encoded proteins. And our target for patients in the aquatic protease. So basically, if we make the aspartic protease non-functional, we are making all other uh, um, proteins non-functional. So, and also seeing the multiple knockout in all the three RFs, can completely uh, prevent it, the activation because that's what in the six uh, asymptomatic events. Uh, so in summary, uh, we got about 95% mutation efficiency using the multiple guide RNA. So with the, all the three guide RNAs, we saw the mutation in nine events out of the 20 testing. 85% showed indels in the, in the target one and the target two. To 70 percent uh, with the small cells uh, guide RNA at the target three. Uh, out of the 20 tested, only two show homogeneous mutation, not good of all copies, and good enough. We further tested for the uniformity and the stability of mutations. So what we did was we took these two events, we multiplied them through tissue culture for several duration. Then we test um, different leaves for the mutation and find out that the mutations were same different leaves. And we also test different daughter plants and, and they showed also the same indels, confirming that the mutation were uniform 
at table. We opted the off-target analysis. For off-target analysis, uh, we have actually plus the RNA plus the PAM, this is the nucleotide, um, with the A genome, which is the Musa acuminate, the reference genome, and also the B genome. And we found about 58 off-target sites uh, in the A genome and then um, B genome uh, sites in the B genome, matching about 63 to 95%. But these are like a few dative. Then for that further, we have sequenced seven potential off-target sites, nine different ones. And we only saw the one-point mutation at one putative off-target locus um, in just one. So our result gave low probability for potential off-target uh, mutation. Um, now we actually have a strategy uh, to knock out uh, the endogenous integrated uh, banana streak virus. So now what we are doing is actually improving the parents so the plantain we have used is a triploid, but the parents either diploid or the tetraploid. So we are busy actually uh, improving these tetraploids and diploids so that they can be lost. We get that, which will be um, uh, the free of the banana streak virus. And, and then after crossing, um, so our parents will be transgenic because we have used the plasmid-based delivery through agrobacterium. But once we will cross these parents, then the hybrids uh, will be non traumatic because we will segregate them and we will look for uh, the mutation, but uh, the E which has only mutation and no integration of transgene. Now we are on um, added banana for fungal and bacterial diseases, and I will briefly tell you about what we are doing for the bacterial xanthomonas. This is a serious problem in East Africa because it's affecting banana products and the roots of billions of smallholder farms growing bananas in East Africa. Uh, so to identify the target editing of banana uh, for the bacterial resistance, we have conducted the comparative transcriptomic analysis um, uh, using the Musa banana, the wild type, uh, and, and is resistant to the, the Xanthomonas wealth. Compare the Musa a successful banana variety, um, and we have identified uh, the target based on the typically expressed gene. Uh, and now we are creating the mutations either in the susceptible genes or supporter genes and the transcriptional factors involve the negative regulator of the defense uh, uh, path. So I'll give you one example. We have used the DMR6, which is a downy mildew resistance uh, slope. It's a uh, um, brain-dependent oxygenase that act as a suppressor of plant This gene has been tested actually uh, in few other crops as well. Um, it is upregulated during pathogen infection. So if we can make this gene non-functional, then uh, the plant should develop the resistance. That's why we have added our bananas uh, the knockout of the TMR6, we have uh, we have used the malaxing, so we use two guide RNA in TMR6. So TMR6 uh, mutants of bananas, then we have tested them against the, the bacterial resistance by our inoculated plants with bacteria, and our added plants, uh, some of the added plants didn't show any easy symptoms as the cold one type uh, uh, bananas uh, develop the disease finally uh, completely succumb in its week's time. Uh, so now we will be uh, we will be testing further these plants in the glass house and condition to perform uh, our result. So finally, for conclusion, um, I'll again emphasize as banana is interesting food crops uh, grown in subtropics and tropics. 
its production is largely constrained by diseases and so therefore there is a need to develop banana varieties with multiple and durable resistance to take uh, a best um, and crispr cas9 based genome um, editing has established banana in our lab and we are currently adding this developing disease resistance in bananas and of its application demonstrated for permanently activating the Uh, banana streak virus which is integrated into the bee genome of banana and currently research is uh, uh, focusing for application of genome editing for developing resistance to bacterial and fungal disease um in the end, i would like to acknowledge uh, my team uh, with jendra valentine sam sara mark uh, and also the this lava and our bioinformatician tushar sa also a collaborator from uc davis uh, who helped us with uh, designing the guide rna and the and the construct for banana streak um to its milleron and and uh, and a colleague from the gates foundation jim lawrence and um, for up uh, for advice on the banana virus project um thank you very much for listening and i will be take any question if you have